miracle number 34, again, um, there is a miracle associated with the story in his life about, uh, a mil uh, about the milk that he drank. Um, but before I get into the actual miracle, we mentioned about Abu Huraira anhu last week, and we gave a little bit of introduction. So continuing from that introduction, um, you know, uh, the Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, he was from a very poor family and he used to live towards the area of Yemen. And he accepted Islam as a very teenage person, very young person. Now, after uh, everybody migrated to Medina, he was still in Medina, uh, he was still in uh, his home country, Yemen. And when he reached the age of like about 26 years, he arrived in Medina. That was about <coughs> the time of Battle of uh, Khaybar and about 7th Hijri year. So when he came, he was single. He wasn't married. He had a mother though. He had a mother and his whole purpose, his whole, whole aim, his objective was to learn uh, the deen of Rasulullah That was He was so much thirsty for knowledge that he was like willing to dedicate his life. So many people, what they do, they... They started, they started their own business, they were involved in market, they got married, this and that. But Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he was, he dedicated himself for seeking knowledge. And we saw last time how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made dua for him. And he became a very knowledgeable person because of that dua. <clears throat> so, as I said, he was very poor, he didn't have a job, so there was... A group of people in Medina, they were famous with the name of Ahlul Sufa. So these are the people who were like guests of Islam, who were the students of knowledge, who would <coughs> just sit, they, they had a space near the masjid and they would sit there and Rasulullah would give the halaqa and the recite verses and a hadith and they would learn from him directly. That was their school, that was their madrasa at that time. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was one of those Ahlul Sufa. And these people, as you know, they didn't have a job, they didn't have a family. So what used to happen, how you, they used to survive is, whenever people used to send charity to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, he would give those charity to these people. And, and we also discussed last time that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not take charity, but he would take gifts. So that's what happened. Uh, that's how Ahl Sufa used to eat uh, and drink from those charities. <clears throat> So, one time what happened, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he was very hungry, was very hungry. He hadn't eaten for a long time. And he used to say that, I used to lay on the ground on my liver because of hunger, to suppress that hunger. And one time what happened, he was so hungry that he was sitting on a way where people used to pass by, you know, when going to the masjid back and forth, he was sitting on a way. And he thought, maybe I can... Um, get some help from somebody so that I can fulfill my hunger. So the first person he saw who was coming in the way was uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. <clears throat> and he, he didn't want to say to him directly that I'm hungry, can you please feed me? Because, you know, he, uh, he was like that, that he wouldn't directly ask like that. But what he did was that he asked Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu what, what is the meaning of this particular verse? What, what's the, uh, he basically asked for tafsir. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he explained to him what, what it means. Actually, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu already knew the meaning. But he was asking him so that through his expressions and his face, his uh, body language, he would know that I'm a hung hungry person now, can you please feed me? But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he didn't get that message. He just explained to him and he went away. Same thing happened after some time. Umar radiallahu anhu, said Umar radiallahu anhu, when he passed, same thing happened. He asked him for this explanation of this verse. He gave it and went back. An amazing thing, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He passed, and just it's amazing that you know when he saw him, what did he do? He smiled. He smiled at him because he knew exactly what he wanted. And that's amazing. You know, the few people who have this capability of reading directly from the face. And exactly figuring out what they really have in their heart. So Rasulullah had that. Call it farasa. farasa. Yeah, Farasa. That's an amazing a science, a skill that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to very few people. <coughs> and so what happened? <coughs> Rasulullah, when he figured that he was 
hungry, he just told him, you know, uh, come with me, come with me to the house. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu um, was, uh, I mean, his household also, he wasn't like uh, very well off, had lots of luxurious food items or so. <clears throat> so when he went into the house, uh, he saw that um, his household presented to him that there's a milk, somebody gifted the milk. So Rasulullah would drink from the gift, but not from the charity. <coughs> so Abu, uh, so Rasulullah he took that bowl of milk. So when Abu Hurairah saw that, he was very happy. Now, Alhamdulillah, I have something to fill it. Uh, but what happened? Rasulullah he said, go and call all the Ahl Sufa. They should have the share from this. So Abu Hurairah, when he heard that, he was kind of upset because he was like, I'm hungry and I need some something to feed myself. And now all these people, there are a lot of Ahl Sufa people. And what's going to be left for me? Anyways, he said, I have to obey Rasulullah sallallahu You know, he is giving all these sacrifices for the sake of Islam, you know, and obviously he wouldn't uh, try to give any suggestions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi So anyways, he goes and calls them out. <coughs> so they all assemble in the house. And Rasulullah sallallahu tells Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, uh, take this and give it to them. Now he again he's like, I should be drinking first. And Rasulullah telling me to start with all those people. Probably I'll be the last person. So anyways, he said, I have to obey Rasulullah whatever it is. That's an amazing obedience of ex uh, example of obedience. You know, he didn't make any uh, statement or any reply to him. He didn't even ask, can I please drink from this first? No, he said, obey. Obedience is obedience. Anyways. But when he gave it to the first person, he is like drinking, and he's drinking and drinking. And Abu Hurairah is seeing that, and he's like, what is going to remain after he drinks? And he's like filled up. Anyways, when he took the bowl, he gave it to other person, round by round, one by one. And everybody is drinking full. And Abu Hurairah is kind of getting surprised now. What's happening here? It's not finishing. So everybody drinks to their fill. And everybody goes away. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that, Ya Abu Huraira, it's just you and me who is remaining now. <coughs> so uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu gives to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, to drink. But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, you sit down and you drink from this. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he starts drinking, and he gives it back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that drink more. So he drinks more again. Then he, when, he gives, when he gave back, he told him again, drink more. And he drank and he said that, by Allah, I do not have any more space left in my stomach. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he took it and he then drank the remaining milk and it was then finished. This is recorded in Sahih al-Bukhari. So that's the uh, amazing miracle. So when, uh, just imagine, you know, when you see these miracles, when you witness these miracles, how the Iman of the Sahaba would have, you know, raised so high. And they witnessed all these miracles. And that's uh, amazing. And 